So re quick recap, parallel circuits, right, our, our rules here, because the current has more than one pathway to take, they're not all going to be equal like they are in series. But if you add the, all the currents up, it's going to equal the total. The voltage, whatever our battery is, that's normally our total voltage. Uh, because each resistor has a, its own pathway back to the battery, all the voltages are going to be the same. So when you know a voltage across a one resistor or across the battery, they're all going to be the same. We can use this. If we know all the resistors, we can take their inverses in order to determine um, – we can use those in order to determine uh, the actual total resistance, sometimes called the equivalent resistance. And then what we're going to do is for each one of these problems, we're going to make ourselves a little VIR table for voltage, current, and resistance. And here is our example problem that I just showed my guys, and we're jumping into that now. Okay, so this symbol all right, is indicating a voltage drop, and it is going across resistor 1, so we're going to put it with V1. R1, we're given 10 ohms. R2, we're given 20 ohms. 40. And R3, we're given 40. No. Yeah. No. It's not 70, bud. The reason why, this is a this is a parallel circuit. So it has a different set of rules in series. In series, you just added all the R's together. Can't do that here. So you can start here one of two ways i usually going to say once you have two of the three in a single row that's what i would start with once you have two out of three in any given row that's how i would start so for this oh wait a minute i'm missing something else aren't i right vt, VT. Look at this. See how all the voltages are the same. So once you know it at one point, it's going to be the same everywhere else. So we have 24 for all of these. Now I'm going to highlight that in pink because that is just basically – that came from the rules. Okay. If it came from the rules, I'm going to highlight it pink. If you had to do math for it, I'm going to highlight it in yellow. All right. So, dope. Guys, once you have two of the three in any single row, now we can use Ohm's Law Triangle. So if I want I, this one in particular, it has to go with all the information in the one row. So I1, if I want to solve for I, solve for current, cover that up, I1 will equal – V divided by R, but you have to use the subscripts, V1 and R1. So 24 over 10, 2.4, the unit for current is the amp. So we have that. I2, V2 over R2, 24 over 20, 1.2 amps. And I3 will be V3 over R3, 24 over 40, and this comes out to be 0.6 amps. So we just had to do the math for these ones. Okay. Great. Problem, Mr. Lombardo. I still don't have these two. Well, guess what? You have all the R's, so you can use this to find the total or the equivalent resistance. And we also have this rule up here. The total current is going to equal the sum of all the other uh, currents. So IT, you don't really necessarily need to show this work. I'm just showing it for whomever. All right, IT will be I1 plus I2 plus I3. So you're 2.4 plus 1.2 plus 0.6. You're going to get 4.2 amps. OK. 
Okay, even though it's not very much math, it is math, and it's also based off of the rule. So I'm going to give it like a small little underline here. Okay, now we're going to solve for RT two different ways because you need to be able to see it both ways. So first thing I always find it easiest is that if you're given, if you have two in any single row, to use the triangle. All right, bet. So if I want RT, if I cover up R in the triangle, it would be VT over IT. So I would do 24 over 4.2. And this comes out to give me, let's see, it's 5.71, but I want you to see this. All right, so 24 divided by 4.2. You get this 5.714, yada, yada, yada. So I'm just going to write 5.71. Ohms. Now, I also wanted you to do it the other way, and I want you guys to do this in your calculator right now as well with me. So the other one, or other way we can solve for RT is using the equation. All right, so one over RT, right? It's it says one over R1 plus one over R, however many resistors you have. So if R1 is 10, you're going to do one over 10 plus one over 20 plus 1 over 40. And we're just going to, now remember this number right here, right? 5.7142. Cool. Now, if I do this, right, it's going to equal, I always like to set this up already. It's going to equal 1 divided by whatever this answer comes out to be. So in your calculator, you're just going to do 1 divided by 10 plus 1 divided by 20 plus 1 divided by 40. All right, cool. Now, I just put some numbers. If it's a whole long chain of decimals, I only put like you know three or four there just to show the work. But if it's a whole long chain of decimals, I leave that in my calculator because now we got to take the inverse. So I'm just going to hit 1 divided by. I want that whole answer. Now, that was very simple. It was only three three numbers there. But if again, if it was a long chain, you're going to do 1 divided by second. And then down here with the negative sign, answer should pop up. It will give you the whole unrounded answer from your last calculation. And guess what? Comes out to be that 7.51428 and blah, 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 blah. They're the exact same number. So either way, you can go. You could have gone about solving for the RT or REQ. Okay, that is our example problem here for our parallel circuit. So, to quick recap, how do I identify if it's a parallel circuit? There's multiple pathways that the current can take to go from start to finish. Current is not going to be the same in each because they all have their own little path, so they can be different. But if you add them all up, all right. Oh, the snap. While I have it here, I do want to just show this. So we're, this is going to be the assignment we're working on today, guys. And I want to just make sure we understand this. All right. Voltage here. Voltage here. If this is 24 at the battery, what is the voltage going through each branch? got to be. 24. If this is battery is 6, what are the voltages got to be across each? Six. All right, cool. Now, this is a little different. So I, I kind of mentioned it before, but I'm just going to say it again. Anywhere on this yellow path, right, before the current has a gets to a point right here where it can then go down R1 or through around R2, before it gets to that point, that is the total current. Now, if the current splits, okay, they're all going to meet back up, let's say right here, and bring their way back towards the battery. So at any point along the yellow path, 
if you have an ammeter there in the problem, right, where it says a number and then the letter A, that is total. But if you look over here at number three, R1 and R2, because they at that junction point, this goes down with R1. So this guy right here is going to be I1. So I want you guys, all right, when I pass this out, you'll be able to write those in. Not yet. Okay, go across here. And we have I2. All right. Now this one up top, this one, this is IT. What about number five down at the bottom? What do we think this three amps is? Is this I1, I2, or IT? T, because it starts with all of it before it decides it's going to split. And then if it were down here and comes back up, it would also be an IT. All right, so I'm going to pass this out for you guys, and we'll do one of the problems together. Um, and then you guys will finish that, okay? All right.